speaking to me now is Robin Black. I'm sure uh, a gentleman many of you will recognize. Um, a bit of a, a legend within mixed martial arts, well known for your uh, analysis and your, your ability to break down fights. Um, tell us why you're in London today. Bare knuckle boxing, baby. I mean, it is, I, I'm fortunate enough. I get to do what I love all the time. I jump on a plane and I fly somewhere and I sit next to a ring or a cage and I talk about fighting. And I, I just, there's something about combat that I just connect to it in the moments as it's happening. And of all of my jobs, and, and you can shove a microphone in front of me in Russia or China or Canada, and I won't say this, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. I, there's something about uh, bare knuckle boxing, BKB, real BKB uh, from the UK, Ireland. Uh, there's something about it. The, the blend of courage and you know the the purity of the violence, but also the purity of the of the gentleman. There's something about that. It's unique in its own way. And so when BKB is on, I want to be a part of it. And uh, Jim and Joe and the team get me to to commentate, and it's a thrill. I love it. I, I there's very few things on earth I love more than commentating BKB. <laughs> it's true. So you mentioned uh, Jim and Joe there, the, uh, the two sort of governors, the two bosses of BKB. Um, can you just tell us how they first reached out to you to bring you into the, the BKB family, if you like? Honestly, I reached out to them. So I have a good friend, his name's Cody Saftik, and Cody actually helps me find some, a lot of the stats on, on the fighters. I'll analyze the fighting and the movements and the artistry, and sometimes he'll help me compile some of the old statistics. And he was already really into BKB, back to, to uh, you know, before they were called BKB, Be Bad, which is, you know, going back years now. And he was always into it, and, I, and we used to work together, and I would see him, I'm like, what is that? And so I started to see it, and I started to become a fan of it, and really started to connect to the fights. And I reached out to them. I reached out to them, and I offered to come over, and they said, we'd love to have you work, but we don't have it in the budget right now. I said, first one's free. First one's free, I'll come and do it for free. And I did, and, and I think, you know, the, the team, Robin Reed and, and Tom, and uh, the whole team, they really pull together this, this storytelling of, of the beauty of boxing. Um, and I think my, my background in, in all types of combat, martial arts and wrestling and boxing and sumo and kickboxing and Muay Thai and, and mixed martial arts and karate and all of the, I've analyzed and commentated so many of them, I think I bring a slightly different perspective to it. And so when I came in and, and I first one's free, um, I guess they liked my work and now I, I get to come in and contribute to all of them. So what, what would you say are the main differences apart from the actual lack of gloves between bare knuckle boxing and glove boxing, technically speaking, is there any different? Is there any differences? There is, there's a lot. There's a lot of differences. For me, it is the purest form. Now, the purest form of combat would be there is no rules. These two individuals will will fight to the end. We, as a civilized society, can't quite fathom that. Um, Although there would be a true beauty in it, it's the risk and the way that we view it and all of these things are challenging as a, as a culture. But when you have no equipment to speak of and we just narrow it down to the, the, the playing surface and two weapons, it becomes a very, very pure sport. And by having no equipment for one, you know, the mitts themselves expand the size of the weapons and they expand the size of the defensive systems. So people start catching, you know, uh, catching opponent's weapons with a large oversized glove. So the size of the glove changes how fighting takes place. And then now by removing the protection to it, you change this weapon. Like if you look at the hand, you know, there are 14 bones, really only should connect with these two. Right? So that now you have to be much more precise. You can get it into much smaller spaces. And, uh, but it's also, you know, sort of, it's not a brittle weapon, but you better hit it with it correctly because the damage to the hand, the pressure on the hand, you know, these artists don't hurt their hands as much because they learn to use it. True bare knuckle fighters learn to use it. Also, if you hit with those knuckles in the soft tissue of the shoulder and the neck, the, the tissue of the arm and the forearms, the ribs, it hits, it hits and strikes differently. So there's a lot of changes just in that just in that, and then in the size of the weapon, in the, the stability of the hand, and then in now you change the rounds. Now you get two minute rounds. Well, that 
Now we have a more precise weapon that can land a little bit easier, that adds risk and a shorter time. All of a sudden you start stacking all of these changes and you have very, very different combat. Then you take the tradition and the history and the pride of bare knuckle boxers and you add that to it and all of a sudden it isn't just boxing without gloves, it's this whole different combat art. Of course, we're here in London today for BKB 15, which um, is an amazing event, which is on pay-per-view. It is a sellout. No more ticks available. So if you want to watch this event, get it on the pay-per-view. The details are on the start of this interview and at the end. Um, how excited are you for BKB 15? Yeah, it's going to be a good one. I mean, the, the show, when, as I said, uh, you know, I came to these guys and said, I want to I wanna contribute something. There was one, because I appreciate the beauty of it, but on the other hand, I could tell that this was going to continue to grow, and it is. You know, we're going to reach probably 10 times the audience that we've reached in the past with better and better fighters, with a deeper, deeper understanding connection to the sport itself. It's going to be killer. It really is. You know, and then the prize fighter tournament, and, and it's the kind of thing that if people like a bit of boxing or a little bit of kickboxing, you know, college wrestling, any kind of combat, if you like it, there's something special about this one. And what particular fighters are you looking forward to watching tomorrow night going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the, uh, the O2 Arena London? I'm, I'm really excited to see Sofiane from, from France fight Will Chope. Uh, Will has over 100 combat matches, contests, and he's a gentleman, and so he, he, and you call them contests, you call them matches, you know, yes, of course, they're fights, but they are contests between professionals, and once you've got into a ring or a cage a hundred times, you have a different relationship with combat. You know, you have a different comfort level in there. So I'm excited to see uh, Will and Sofiane fight. Sofiane is a very, very technical uh, uh, striker as well. And it's likely that the winner will fight Jimmy Sweeney, um, who is just something very special to watch. So that's, that's the fight I'm most interested in. But, you know, we've tried every time. We've tried to say which one's going to be the big fight or which one's going to be the fight of the night. It's impossible. It's, it's impossible. There's, it, it's just in the nature of the, the, the matchmakers. Jim and Joe do a wonderful job of finding the right humans, too. It is, they aren't just machines that fight. These are humans that have emotions and fears and anxieties and courage and confidence and pride. And all of these aspects create martial artistry, um, whether it's boxing or kickboxing, whatever, it's so much more than punches and kicks. And I think as we watch it and talk about it sometimes, we, do, we don't do the greatest job of making people sort of connect to that. These are just people. Like, you, you can have a hundred fights if you like, but you still started out as a human that took a boxing class or a kickboxing class. They're just people. And those people are who walk into there with their skills and experiences. And, and so, you know, 11 fights on any night, 22 great combat sportsmen, they're all, it's, it's all special. That's another thing I think sometimes because you can see fights on so many channels when you turn them on, maybe we don't appreciate how special each one is. These are two humans who have dedicated their life to, to this moment that we're about to have. So I appreciate every single fight. I appreciate, I appreciate so much being able to sit right there and try to enrich the experience for the audience. It's something very special to me. And of course, Robin, um, what's been launched tomorrow night, uh, a prize fight, the tournament. Mm -hmm. Um, which has got people who follow Bare Knuckle Boxing so excited. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to bring in the trophy. Um, this is the trophy that the, the eight Warriors are going to be competing for. Um, how excited are you for this prize fighter tournament that's going to be launched tomorrow night, live on pay-per-view? It, it kind of seems almost unfair. Like, this was almost unnecessary to add one more layer to it. But, you know, this is a sport of deep tradition you know, hundreds of years of tradition. So now you add to it that you go in and you start in a, in a collection of eight great men and one of them will hold this at the end. You know, it, it, is, it is another layer. As I said, almost an unnecessary <laughs> layer of awesomeness when you have every fight is wonderful. But this is, it, this is an aspect of, of combat sports and it adds to people's ability to really feel that connection to it, whether it's a belt or a trophy or something, but it also means a lot to the fighter. Once you have this, once you won this, you look back at three contests against three great men who were beating men all the way through, and then you have this for the rest of your life. It's, the, the tournament is, and what is the prize money? 10,000 pounds. 10,000 pounds, that's like 100 billion Canadian dollars. Like, that, that's, a, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a lot of cake right there. So, it's, it's man, it's, it's gonna be every single time. 
every minute of these nights are special. They're, they're, they really are, and they deserve that treatment. And I'm proud to get to, to be a little part of it. So uh, anyone who's thinking about booking the pay-per-view for tomorrow night at the O2 Arena, what advice would you give them? You know, we watch all kinds of nonsense on television. You know, like we literally, on the internet, we, we watch absurd things. This is something that can be incredibly, it is beautiful and it's confusing and it's exciting and, and it's stressful to watch, but it's also inspiring, you know? What are we, 10 pounds, something like that? Yeah, I mean, shit, sometimes like a, an imported beer will cost you that. You know what I mean? Like three and a half hours of, of 22 human beings who have dedicated their life to that moment. If you don't have 10 pounds for that, I don't think we can be friends. And another thing I just want to point out just before we finish, I believe you've got a Welsh connection. I do. My mother's Welsh. My mother is Welsh. And uh, I haven't been to uh, Cardiff. I performed there with my rock band about a decade ago. Um, and I know BKB was there for maybe 12. What, what number were we there? Welsh. Yes. 11 or 12, I think. Yeah, and I didn't get to make it for that one, but I can't wait to come back. And I still have family there. My mother is from Landerdod, Wales, which whenever I mention that to a Welsh person, they know it immediately. And that reminds me, oh yeah, Wales is a very small place, but I can't wait to go back. So there you have it, BKB15 live.